Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to print shipping labels. I already showed you how to print invoices, right? That's easy. Well, what if you've got to mail an invoice to their office, but you've got to ship a product to a different address? So we'll add a ship to address for each customer, and then we'll make shipping labels, and we'll have some fun. Today's question comes from Evelyn in Maplewood, New Jersey, one of my Platinum members. Evelyn says, I've been using your invoicing database and it works great, but in addition to sending an invoice, I also have to ship a product. Right now, I'm making shipping labels manually. Is there any way I can just click a button and create a label for a different shipping address from my database? Of course. There are lots and lots of different ways to do this. I'm gonna show you one method, but I cover a few different ways to do this in my different classes. I'm gonna try to show you an easy one that doesn't involve any programming. So we're gonna call this an expert level class. I consider expert to be the middle ground between beginner and developer. All right, you pass the basics, but you're not quite into programming yet. So maybe we'll do a little bit of programming because there's a couple little extra cool tweaks. Like for example, copying the build to address to the ship to address. You can do that with just one little button and a couple of lines of code and it's pretty cool. So maybe I'll show you that at the end of the video. So we'll, we'll, we'll see if you're good little boys and girls. Now we do have some other prerequisites. Let's see what else we need here. If you have not watched my invoicing video, go watch this. It's based on the blank template video that I've got. And I show you how to set up invoices and stuff. Go watch this because this is what this video is based on is this guy. So go watch this thing. You should also know how to make calculated fields, both in queries and in forms. You should know how to reference a value on an open form. Okay, so if the customer form is open, you should know how to get the customer form ID, the, the customer ID off the customer form. Okay, so if not, go watch this one. And go watch my video on the if function. And if you don't know what that is, go watch this. And these are all free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. There might be a couple more, but uh, these are the big ones. I'll, I'll, I'll throw in links to other ones if we need them. All right, so here I am in my tech help free template. This is a free database you can grab off my website if you want to. And if you watched my invoicing database, you know that you've got the uh, customers here. Customers can have orders. Orders can have invoices printed. So now what we need is, okay, we're going to send the invoice. Great. But now we got to ship the product. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're just going to, for each customer, we're going to add a second address. Now this will be their bill to address. We'll add an optional ship to address. Now, I personally have something that I call the rule of threes, okay? If you have up to three of anything, it's okay to keep it in a single table. If it's never going to be more than three, like phone numbers, addresses, that kind of stuff. You got three, and it's never going to be more than three, fine. You could put three address fields in the customer table. Build to, ship to, whatever else you might want, right? Phone numbers. You got phone, you got fax, you got cell, all right? If you ever need more than three, if you ever think possibly in the future you might need more than three, then it should be in a second related table, like contacts, for example, like orders, right? We don't know how many orders this customer may place. They may place one. They may place, hopefully, thousands, right? So you'd never put order information in the customer table. You'd never put contact information like this in the customer table. Some people put it in notes, and they eventually have problems with it, right? So rule of threes, all right? I wouldn't put all this contact information in the customer table. Addresses are the same way. Do you ever think you're ever possibly going to need more than three addresses for your customers? It happens, right? I dealt with one client that I had years ago. They needed to have possibly, you know, five, six, ten addresses for a company. So that's fine. Build your database so that it meets your needs. Phone numbers. You might need more multiple phone numbers. That's, not, that's totally up to you. But for this example, we're going to keep it simple. We're going to have a billing address and a shipping address, and that's all this business will ever need. Okay? So the first step is just to add the fields to the table. So we're going to go to the customer table, design view. Now I've already got all the address fields in here that I need. They're right there. See how I did that? Take your mouse, come over here in the margin, right click, drag it down, and select all of those guys. Copy, Control C. Now we're going to come down to the bottom. Click down here like that, select that row, and hit Paste, Control-V. Boom, there's your address fields. Now, I'm just going to add Ship To in front of each of these. Ship To, right? I'm going to go Shift, 
home that selects where the cursor is at to the beginning of the line. That's an old word trick, right? Copy. Then I'll come right here and go paste, 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 paste. All right, now I'm going to select these guys and move them up under the other address. Now, once you've got them selected like that, click and drag any anywhere inside this block here and drag it up under country and drop it right there. See how I did that? Watch that again. Review the... See, that's the great thing is in the classroom, I'd have to show it again. You guys can just rewind the video. So watch that again if you didn't get it right. I cover a lot of this moving stuff around in my Access Beginner series. Now, do you have to rename these ones Bill 2? You can if you want. You don't have to. And if you don't have any code, if you don't have any VBA code, any programming in your database, Access is really forgiving as far as if you rename a field. It should rename anywhere else this field is used in queries, forms, and reports. It should. It doesn't always, but it should. But do you have to rename it? No, you don't have to rename it if you don't want to. You can leave it just like this. You'll just remember that this is the bill to address. This is the ship to address. Now, the way we're going to program this is we're only going to use the ship to address if it's different from the primary billing address. You don't have to copy it if you don't want to. We'll use a little if function to say, hey, if the ship to address is blank, if it's null, use the, the regular address. All right, so we'll, we'll get to that in a bit. All right, so let's go ahead and save this, and we'll close it. And now we got to add it to our customer form. All right, now here's the billing stuff. Let's design view, and I'm just going to do this. Watch this. I'm just going to copy these guys. Copy, paste. See that? Control-C, Control-V. Copy, paste. Now, I'm going to move these down just a bit. Well, you know, you can move them down. You can put a box around them. You could separate it however you want to. Let's just change these guys' color a little bit. That's what I like. I'm going to select these ones, and let's maybe make those like a light purple, just like that. And then we'll take these ones, and then we'll make these ones maybe like a light green. See? Just as something to separate them. And this will be billing address like that. We'll maybe bold that. And this will be shipping address, or whatever you want to call it, like that. All right, you want to put boxes around this stuff? You can't. You want to separate them out a little bit more, give it a little bit more space between them. What, however, you want it to look. It's they're your Legos. You put them together however you want. Now, of course, I got to move this down so it matches. Right? It's a little, a little stuff like that bugs me. <laughs> okay, looking good. All right, so now we got to just change these fields. All right, so we come over here. The control source is going to be ship to address. Don't forget, copy, paste, and make sure the name is also shipped to address, right? That's address. The control source and the name are the same. All right, do the same with these guys. Ship to address. We're going to make this the ship to city. Copy, and then paste, all right? Same thing with state. You, want it, you don't want text 34. Just trust me on this, because if you make any functions or whatever, or any formulas or later on VBA programming that re relates to that. You don't want to have, you know, X equals text 35 in your code. What, what is text 35, all right? All right, country, ship to country, copy. And notice if you click over here, it selects that. You can click up here and then select the text or you can just click on the name over there and paste it in. A student taught me that one. I didn't know that one. All right, save that, close it, open it. All right, looking pretty good. All right, next up, before we make the label, I want to make a query that gives me just the data that I need for the label. Now, this, we did the same thing with the orders, right? If you look for invoices, all right, underneath this invoice, there is this guy called the order invoice queue. What does order invoice queue do? Well, order invoice queue gives me all the information that I need with the order information, the order detail information, and the customer information so I can generate the invoice, okay? And in here, it's got a criteria that says, just show me the order that's currently displayed, right? The forms, order F, order ID. So what we can do is if I want to print a label, a shipping label, because we can just print a shipping label right here from the customer form, right? If I click printing shipping label, I want to generate one label for this customer and have that be the source for the report, all right? And we will build that query and the label 
in the next video in part two yeah i know the slide says tune in tomorrow I, it's a, I stole it from batman it's a tune in tomorrow same bad time same bad channel i know today's friday it's friday the 21st of june 2024 so we will do this on monday monday the 24th um but if you're a member you can watch it right now because members get access to all of the videos as soon as they're released and i'm going to record it in just a few minutes but that's going to be your tech help video for today part one I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you Monday for part two. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. 
Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my Tech Help videos, plus access to my Code Vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any Tech Help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.